Good day and welcome back. Today, something lazy. We're going to make a kit. A simple one at that. I got this in a recent mailbag. Uh, you may not have seen the video because I think this was one of the ones that were on my hard drive when it exploded. So, if you're wondering if you missed it, you probably didn't. It's on an exploded hard drive. I'm not quite sure what this does. It says it is a voice controlled LED thing. So we'll see here, whoops, I sent something flying there. So we'll see here, I don't know if you can tell, but it looks like there's a mic. It's going to be this guy. There are a couple transistors, five red LEDs, three resistors. Should be pretty simple to put together. And today I'm enlisting the help of a component tester. I'm going to give that a shot. It is a bit slow to test components, but I don't feel like taking out the multimeter, and this takes up far less space on the bench. And also, I'll be using some Julian Eyelet um, soldering technique. I'm going to be using this. Uh, this is the generic brand, brand uh, blue tack to stick down the parts. See how well that works. So, like always, we should start with the lowest profile components. So, let's get started. Of course, the lowest profile components are these resistors. I see I need three. You got a 10K a 1 meg and a 4.7k so I think the 7 is green I think it's going to be that one so I'm going to give this a test in the tester nope that's a 1k okay so the, oh sorry uh, almost a thousand case that's a 1 meg so it's going to go here Throw that in there. Pull the legs taut. I'm not going to bend the legs over this time. I'm going to actually just stick it down with um, blue tack or generic tack. So this one, next one in. That is 10.32, so 10k. That goes over here, 10k. these taut and then the last one should be the 4.7 oh there's that green band stuff that in there and yeah 4.757 okay tuck that in there There we go, and now I'm just going to use a little bit of this uh, blue tack stuff, which is actually white in this case. It comes in all sorts of colors. And this is typically used to hold like posters on your, uh, on your wall when you don't want to peel the paint off. Just turn on the soldering iron, so I will bring you back when the soldering iron's hot. Okay, iron's hot. I zoomed you in a little bit so you can see. Although I may not be able to see since I'm pretty far away from this, but let's give it a shot. Oh, I'm going to stick that down a bit better. There we go. Let's see here. Always relaxing making these kits. Especially when there's nothing to mess up, like there's not very much in this kit so I don't think I'll have to troubleshoot much even if it doesn't work there we go and now just clip the leads off got these new uh, flush cutters go that did a pretty good job okay let's get the next ones up so I think the next flattest ones would be these transistors uh, one of them doesn't have any markings yeah that one don't know if you can tell no markings on that one um, this one does have markings 
that is a C331. No idea what they are, so I'm actually going to pop them in the tester. Because I don't know. This one doesn't say. This says uh, 9014 and 9014. So they should be the same. So let's see, that's one of them. I'll stick it in there, flat side to the flat side. I'm going to stuff it right down there. And this one. Yeah, they're the same. They're both NPN. Okay, good. Flat side facing the same direction. Okay, I don't know if I need to actually secure these, but I will anyway. Put one ball there. I'll put another ball sort of there. And then jam that down onto the mat. And then I'll zoom you in and solder that in. You gotta be a little bit quicker soldering transistors. But since they look like they're just generic NPN transistors, I'm not too concerned. Because I have some kicking around here. And we saw in the component tester that they were good, so if they uh, if they not if they don't work, it's definitely my fault. Okay, on to the next ones. So I think the next ones up are this mic and the plug here. They're about the same height. Now the mic, I'm not a hundred percent sure what the polarity is. But it does seem like the leads are at the bottom here, so it looks like it'll fit like this. Doesn't mean it'll work, but whatever. Uh, for the plug, the two, geez, the two connections are way up there. Wow, that fits tight. I don't think this is the proper plug. If you see, it's actually lifted up like that. Interesting. I'm not sure this was the right uh, connector. Let me see here. I put this in like this. This is the way they want it in. Yeah, positive is to positive. Don't know how I'm going to pull that plug out now, though. There we go. Um, okay, well, let's give it a shot. I guess I'll just jam them all in. Maybe I'll put the plug in first and then do the mic. So the mic has much longer leads. Put the plug in that. Solder that. So I'm a little off screen for you. How about there? Oops, did I bridge the two? I did. There we go. Okay, and I'll put in the mic. Hopefully the polarity is right. The mic's going to stick up a bit. I don't think I can do much about that. Two, cut these off. One and two. Okay, I think it's time for the LEDs and the caps. So the LEDs all go in a proper direction. They have the flat on this side here. Let's see if this one actually even has flats. Yep. Yeah. So the flat is there. So I'll stick the positive on the positive side and the flat. Towards the negative, 
sort of like this. Oh, almost put that one in backwards. Now I'm not quite sure how to form my tack here. Hmm. Maybe I'll just do this. Uh, I'll use the tack to make them all even. And I'll just solder one leg, then adjust them, reheat it while I'm adjusting them, just to get them all level. Okay. Now they're all tacked down. You can basically you solder one leg and then you push on the LED flat while you reheat the leg. Oops, messed up that one though. There we go. And now it's gonna be flush. So that you can solder the other leg. This one is flush though, the one in the middle. I'm gonna get it anyway just in case. It's good. Okay, and now I'll just do the other legs. Oops, bridge those two. There we go. Can't reach that one. There we go, trim the legs off. Whoops. Watch your eyes. That came up and hit my uh, my spotlight here, my lighting. Okay, good. This down. And there we go. Only two components left, and that would be the capacitors. So for those capacitors, there are two so one says C2 1 microfarad I'm guessing it's a little one yeah 50 volts 1 microfarad don't know why they use 50 volt caps because the maximum um, voltage on this is 4.5 volts according to the AliExpress listing and then this one here 47 now usually the check the the rayed out area goes to the negative and the negative on the cap is this white band so I'm gonna put that in that, take a piece of quote unquote blue tack, put that in like that. There we go. Although these can be soldered the same way as the LEDs, solder one side than the other. Then again, the negative, this white band here, goes onto the rayed area over here, uh, like this. There we go, stick that in there. Actually, put that on top so I can stick that down. Oh, don't quite have enough to stick it down, so I'm going to use another blob. There we go. Same deal. Solder these guys up. Trim them down. And there we go. A quick little kit. I'm just going to put the uh, plug in like that. Positive is going to the positive marking. That's good. 
And so there's our kit. So now all that's left to do is see if it works. So here I have our little kit shoved into this breadboard with the breadboard power supply. I have it set to 3.3 volts. I think that's a bit low and the other option would be 5 volts. And that's a bit high. So I'm going to start with the low first. I'm not sure if this is going to work. I see the LED is not on there so it's off. So I'm going to flip it on and we'll see what happens. I just have the leads show. Oh, there we go. So it's reacting to my voice. I'm not really speaking that loudly, but it seems to work. So just making noise um, actually it picks it up. That's good. So we could just tap the mic here. Yeah, so there we go. It works. Now I'm pretty sure what's happening is that the um, membrane inside here uh, is vibrating a magnet around a coil. That's typically how microphones work, kind of the opposite of a um, speaker. And what that's doing is it's powering the base of one of these transistors, which then goes the uh, collector emitter junction powers the base of the next transistor and lights up the LED. So I think that's why we have a 1 mega ohm resistor for having a really small current come into the base of this one. Then we have a 10k ohm resistor to limit the base current of this uh, resistor and then a 4.7k is probably to limit the current through the LEDs. I'm guessing at least. Makes sense to me. So yeah, let's see if we can bump it up to 5 volts. Now it says to go only up to 4.5 volts, but uh, these transistors, these caps, everything should be able to take 5 volts. So let's see what happens. So right now it's off. Whoop, there we go. It's a lot brighter. Okay, so it reacts the same way, but now we get more brightness out of the LEDs. Don't think any of these components are getting hot. Definitely the caps will survive 5 volts because they're 50 volt caps after all. But yeah, this is a nice little kit, and especially if you only have a few minutes to build something. Uh, this is great, and on top of that, we can study this. Oh, nice. I can really get them going if I touch the mic. We can study this circuit and, and make our own based on whatever we want. Like, for example, we can trigger these lights on and have them decay over time. We can uh, trigger them on and have them stay on for a certain period of time. We do all sorts of things. We can increase the gain, and so we can actually power, let's say, um, like like huge, like 100 watt LEDs with our voice if we want to. So, yeah, it's pretty nice. So overall, I recommend to get these kit. This kit's only like 50 cents or something like that. 50, 54 cents Canadian. So that's what like under 30 cents American, which is great. Pick up a couple of them. Have fun. It's a great starter kit for kids, for example. There's not many connections to make. Everything's through hole. The only thing that was dicky a little bit was this um, this connector here, but it still worked. Oh, and use a 5 volt source or a 3.3 volt source. So let's say uh, two, probably two double A's would work. Um, three double A's would be better. And yeah, that's about it. Thanks for watching.